Hey guys, how are you all? Welcome back to One Stop Biology. So, uh, today we are going to continue with the class 11th NCRT chapter 4, which is Animal Kingdom, right? So, we have already covered uh, some part of it in the last two videos. So, if you have missed watching those videos, please go back and watch it. Uh, so, what we have covered in those videos is in the first video we have covered the basis of classification of all the animals and then in the second video we have covered the very first uh, phylum which is porifera and then the second phylum which is nidaria or sedentrata okay so in today's video we are going to cover the next three phylum which is tenophora platyhelminths and ascalmins okay so we'll start off with the phylum tenophora now basically tenophora are also known as sea walnuts or comb jellies okay and why are they known as sea walnuts or comb jellies is because of their structure so if i show you their structure right now it is round walnut like and then they have combs so the basically they their uh, their body is jelly like and they have combs right as you can see here these combs so that is why they are known as sea walnuts or comb jellies okay so these tenophores are basically exclusively marine their symmetry is radial they are radially symmetrical they have two layers of organization, which is ectoderm and endoderm. So they are diploblastic in nature, and then they have tissue level of organization. Okay. Now their body basically is ciliated. Okay. So the body has eight external rows. So again, if you see the diagram, it has, you can see the, there are eight rows okay i can even label it as in one two three four five six seven and eight right so they have eight external rows right now apart from that it is ciliated and it has comb plates which helps in location basically locomotion right it helps them in movement now these basically are the comb plates okay and you can see that they bear the small cilia okay so basically the body bears eight external rows and ciliated comb plates which helps in locomotion okay now digestion in case of tenophora is both it can be both extracellular that is outside the body or intracellular that is inside the body okay now after that one very important uh, feature of tenophora which makes them uh, stand out is bioluminescence okay so basically they somewhat light inside water okay now they have the property to emit light right so bioluminescence is nothing but property to emit light okay now in the case of tenophores the sexes are not separate so they again are what hermaphrodite okay and the sex reproduction occurs only through sexual reproduction so basically they don't have asexual reproduction they reproduce only sexually and fertilization is outside the body so that is external with indirect development so there is a larval stage as well by development so larval stage is present 
and fertilization is external. Now some examples of tenophora are pleurobrachia or tenoplana. Pleurobrachia and tenoplana and we have seen the body structure already, right? So this is the structure of tenophora. So I have explained this is the body basically, right? These are the rows. Inside they have the system and then they have these comb plates, okay? So let's move on to the next phylum which is platyhelminths, okay? So platyhelminths, uh, if you guys would have heard of, are also known as, also known as flatworms. And why they are known as flatworms? Just imagine that you have uh, an apple in your hand and you just keep it on a surface and you push it so hard that it becomes flat or it becomes like a very thin slice of apple okay so basically what they have is they have dorso ventrally flattened body and that is why they are known as flat worms okay now mostly they are form, for, found as parasites they are found inside animals they are found as endoparasite that is inside a body of a host they are found as endoparasite in animals including human beings including us okay now their body is again symmetrical so they have symmetry they have all three layers so they are triploblastic they have endoderm ectoderm and mesoderm as well and they are acelomate there is no body cavity present okay and the organization is level of organization is organ level so now we are moving towards a more diverse and complex form of organization okay so in the previous one we saw that it had tissue level of organization tenophora and before that we even saw in sponges that they have cellular level of organization okay so now these have organ level of organization now they have hooks and suckers which is present in parasite forms and it helps in attachment to the body of the host basically okay then they have flame cells for excretion and osmoregulation okay so i hope you understand both the terms so osmoregulation basically is maintenance of what you regulate something right that you can see from the word itself so maintain maintenance of a constant osmotic pressure okay so it is maintenance of constant os osmotic pressure in fluids of an organism okay and it happens by maintaining the water and salt balance basically okay so they have specialized cells which are flame cells which helps in osmoregulation and excretion now again here the sexes are not separate so they are hermaphrodite okay however fertilization is internal and again development is indirect through larval stage okay so basically members of this okay and specifically if i talk about the species planaria so members of planaria what they do is they possess very high regeneration capacity so they regenerate at a very fast pace okay and exa some examples are tenia and fasciola okay so these are all parasites so we heard we always hear that you know uh, that um, there are several places wherein you find worms inside the abdomen of a person so basically those are the examples wherein you find tapeworms sometimes inside a human being's abdomen right so basically they are found in human beings as well okay and this is the structure of tapeworm that is tenia and the other one is the structure of a liver fuke, which is fasciola. Okay, so you can see that they have suckers, hooks and suckers. Okay, so this also has uh, hooks and suckers near the mouth. Okay, so basically it serves as mouth as well. Now the next 
phylum is of ascal mills now what are ascal mills so basically ascal mills have circular body okay in cross section and that is why they are known as round worms because of their circular body in cross section they are known as round worms now these are free living okay they are aquatic and terrestrial or they are also again parasitic in plants and animals okay so the phylum ascal mills they are they can be free living they can be aquatic and terrestrial and parasitic as well in plants and animals okay so basically they have organ system level of organization okay so again now here it is even more advanced having organ system level of organization they are bilaterally symmetrical they have all three layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so they are triploblastic and then they have a pseudocoelom they are pseudocoelomate now here in the case of ascal mills the elementary canal is completely formed so they have a complete elementary canal with a well developed muscular pharynx okay and then the excretory tube removes body waste from body through an excretory pore so basically the, they have a complete elementary canal okay now here sexes are separate so till now we saw that the animals were hermaphrodite now here what you see that both the sexes that is male and female sex are separate and they are dioecious okay so females are longer than males so if you see the diagram here of a female and a male round worm you see that the female is much longer than the male okay so sexes are separate females are longer than males and fertilization is internal so fertilization occurs inside the body of the female and development may or may not be direct or indirect so it can be direct into an offspring or larval stage might be present now some examples of the phylum ascal mills are ascaris which is a round worm which area which is a filaria worm which is again a disease in humans and hook worm which is nothing but ancyclostoma okay so these are known as ancyclostoma that is hook worm here you can see the body type in the case of ascal mills round worm so since they have a round rounded body if we cut a section that is why they are named as round worms so guys see we have finished three more phylum i who also hope that you are uh, revising all the topics that we have covered and you are uh, focusing on your self study as well uh, i hope you understood this video completely if not please raise a doubt either on the comment section or through the whatsapp number given in the description of the video if you have understood the uh, three phylum completely please like this video and share it with your friends and do subscribe to the channel to stay updated with all the upcoming videos thanks guys bye bye